the previous episode, I showed you how to add full text searching using Elasticsearch with the Tire Gem. For example, here I have a list of articles, and I can now search them by typing in a keyword, and we'll find all articles containing that word. Now, there are a lot more features that this supports, so in this episode, I'll be expanding on this, showing you some additional features and configuration you can add to improve the search. I'll start off by showing you some additional options that you can pass into the search query string here. For example, what if we only want to search the articles which have that name Superman and not the content? What we can do is pass in a prefix of name colon, and that will only search the name attribute of the articles for that keyword. You can also use an asterisk to do wildcard searching. For example, if we add a, an asterisk in here, it'll search for all articles which uh, have a word that ends in man inside of the name. You can also use quotes. For example, if you want to find specifically this phrase here with those two words next to each other, you can put quotes around them and that will find just that specific phrase. Now, if we don't have the quotes on two separate words here, what it's going to do is actually perform an or query. So it's going to find articles which have either fictional or character words inside of their content. You can see that Krypton, for example, is not a character, but it's still showing up. So it's similar to just typing fictional or character, we get the same results. However, if we type fictional and character, it's just going to return the articles which have both of those keywords. You can also say fictional not character, and it will return the one article that matches that given query. Now there are various ways to customize this query string behavior. If you check out the Elasticsearch guide, there's a section under query DSL called query string, and there are various options which you can pass in to customize this, including one of them here being the default operator. Now I like to normally set this to and instead of the default or, so let's do that here. So if you check out the article search model, this is where we're doing the search through tire. And right now we're just calling string and passing in the query without any options, but we can pass in any of those options here, such as the default operator and set it to and, and that way it'll change that default behavior. So now when we do a search for a fictional character, instead of returning all three articles, it's just going to return the two that match both of those keywords. Now by default, the articles are going to be sorted by relevance, but you can customize that through tire in the search block here. You can make a call to sort and then pass that a block and call by inside of here and pass in the name of an attribute you want to sort by, such as published at. You can even pass in and say descending order inside of here. Now what I like to do is I like to make that the default, but only if the uh, query parameter is blank. So that way, if the user types in a query option, then it will sort by relevance instead. Now another common requirement is pagination. And the pagination options should go directly into the search call here. So I can add a page option, and that can be set to the params page, so that's whatever the user passes in. And I can also set a per page option here, and I'll set that to two so that uh, we can see the results here on the short list of records. Now we also need to add a gem to handle the pagination, such as will paginate or kaminari. I'll add will paginate here, and don't forget to run the bundle command to install it. And then at the bottom of this index template here where we're listing the articles, I'll just add a call to will paginate here and pass in the articles into that. So now when I reload this page here, instead of displaying three articles, it displays two with some pagination that I've already styled off camera. And you can see it's working fully here. Yay! Now a quick note about Tire's DSL here. Notice it uses blocks a lot, and each time it's doing so, it's going to change the current context. So self here is not going to refer to the article class. It's going to be a special Tire search object. This makes a nice DSL where you can call these methods directly here, but it can cause some confusion if you're trying to access maybe other class methods within this block. So if this is a problem, what you can do is pass a parameter to this block and then that means you'll have to use that object every time for each of these other methods. But the advantage here is that self is going to refer to the class like more standard traditional behavior of blocks. So if you like this behavior, you may want to switch to this context. It works in most, most blocks that Tire uses, such as the query and sort blocks here. But uh, the other syntax is really nice and clean, so I'm just going to stick with that. All right, now that our search behavior is quite feature complete, Let's move on to indexing because there are certain attributes that I would like indexed inside of here that aren't by default. By default, it just indexes all the attributes in the article model. However, for example, the author name here, I would like to add that to the index as well. But that is an association and not a specific attribute on the article. So for example, 
if I type in Clark, I would like it to be able to search the author as well as the article content for that specific keyword, but right now nothing comes up when I search for it. Well, there's a method you can override on the model called to indexed JSON. And this just returns a JSON string which contains the data that it should index. And to do this, we can just call to JSON on this and pass it any other options. And so for example, if we want to include the author name, we can say we want to pass in the methods of including the author name into here. And then we can just make that author name method, which returns the author dot name. Now, since I'm in Rails 3.1, this will all work perfectly because to JSON here, will just serialize all the attributes for this article. And in this case, include that author name. However, in earlier versions of Rails, this is going to include a root element. And so to get rid of that, what you can do is call uh, include root in JSON and set that to false on this class here. And that way it won't include the root element in your to JSON call. So that's necessary if you're using versions before Rails 3.1. Now for this to take effect, we need to re-index the article records. And Tire provides a rake task for doing so called Tire import and it expects a class such as uh, article here. And we can tell it to force the records because our index already exists. Now, because our article class is inside of the Rails environment, we also have to load up the Rails environment. So prefix this with the environment task so it loads up the Rails environment first. Oh good, looks like that worked. Now this task does require some sort of pagination. So if you get an error saying undefined method paginate, then you'll want to add will paginate or Kaminari to your gem file before running this task. So now with that imported, I could just reload this page here and now it finds the articles based off of the keyword Clark there because it's in the author name. Now notice inside of my article model here where I'm performing the search, I'm passing this option here setting load to true. And I had to set this in the previous episode for it to load the records from the database. Otherwise it would re completely rely on the attributes that were indexed. And uh, it would be nice though, if we could index all the necessary attributes we need to display the articles. So that way we can remove this option. And that way there's better performance because we aren't actually loading the records from the database. Now to do this, I need to go into the index template here where I'm displaying the articles and replace any occurrences where I'm going through an association. For example, here where I'm calling article author dot name, instead I want to call author underscore name, which is a method we set up earlier so that it can be easily fetched from the index. And the same goes for this article comments dot size. Let's make an attribute called comments underscore count, and that way we can fetch it from the index if we index that. So back in the article model here, I can add that comments count method, which just returns the comments size. And I can index this as well by adding it to the to index JSON call here and just add comments count in there. And since we changed the index, we'll need to run this import command again. So it reindexes those articles. Now let's try removing this load is true option here so that it doesn't load the records from the database anymore. All right, let's cross our fingers and see if this works. Hit reload here. And it doesn't, it raises an exception here saying undefined method string F time. So it looks like what, what is happening is the published at time is just a simple string here, but instead we want an actual time so we can call string F time on it here. A quick fix for that is to call to time on any time that you're using inside of the view here. So that way it'll convert it to a time from that string if it's not a time already. Let's try this again by reloading this page here. And now it works. So now it's just fetching the records from the index instead of using the actual SQL database. Now Tire even provides a persistence module, which allows you to store the records entirely on Elasticsearch so you don't need a separate database. It's pretty cool. So check out the readme if you want more information on that. Now there may come a time when you want to have more control over exactly how the attributes are indexed in Elasticsearch. Right now we're just tossing it a simple JSON string, which for the most part works quite well. But over time, if you want to fine tune things, you probably want to create a mapping. To do this, we can call mapping at the class level here and pass it a block. And then inside of here, you can call indexes and pass any attributes you want to index, such as our ID column. Now the type will default to a string, but you can change that by just specifying the type option. And we can set that to say integer. And so you can just fill this out with any other attributes such as the author ID and so on. 
So here's what that looks like with all the attributes and their type. Now there are other options you can pass in here as well. One option is called boost, and that defaults to one. And we can set this to anything we want, maybe 10 for the name. So what this means is that if the name matches one of the keywords the user types in the query, then its relevance will boost, be boosted up higher than if it matches the content, for example. Now another option you can pass in here is analyzer. And so you can set that to an analyzer you have set up, maybe a snowball analyzer. And what this does is it changes how the text is indexed. So specifies how the words are split up, maybe how the casing is handled, or maybe some stemming, and so on. Now analyzers are a bit out of the scope for this episode, but just let you know that you can do that here. For more information on the options you can pass in here, check out the core types section of the mapping elastic search guide. And there are various options which are listed here that you can pass in to further customize it. And for more information on analyzers, there's an entire section called analysis under the index module section of the elastic search guide. Now, once you're done defining the index mapping, you'll need to run the import rake task again to re-index the records. And notice here, it now tells you all the mapping details as it's sending the JSON to Elasticsearch here inside this properties uh, JSON here. So now that the index is all set up, next I want to add some faceted search functionality. So what I want to do here is allow the user to select an author name by just clicking on it to further filter out the search results. To add facets, we need to go into the search block of our model and make a call to facet instead of here and then give it a name such as authors and then pass in a block. And here I can tell it to set up a terms facet for the attribute author ID. And then inside of the articles index template, we need to display the facets. Now there's quite a bit of code involved in here, so I'm just going to paste this in. So here we have this facet section and we need to list out the authors that the user can filter by. Now to fetch the authors, what we need to do is call articles.facets and fetch the authors facet, which is the name we gave it in the search. And then we can call terms on this to fetch each of the facet options. And then for each of the authors, we want to link to them unless it's already a uh, current. And then we can call the facet term here to get the author ID, which is the value of the term inside of that facet and then fetch the author and display the name for that author here. And then we want to have this link go to the author ID parameter here and set that when they click on it. And then if the author ID parameter is already set to this value, we want a link here to remove that author ID parameter. Otherwise we'll display a count of how many articles match that given author. So here's what that facet looks like. Now I've already stylized this off camera, but you can see there's an author section here where I'm displaying the various authors and linking to them. And when I click on a author, you can see that it sets the author ID in the URL and it unlinks it and I can remove it by clicking here. Then it removes that author ID parameter. So what I need to do is set up the uh, search so that it includes this author ID parameter so it only fetches the results that match that given author. To do this, I will add another filter to the search block here. So make another call to filter and this time I'll make it a term filter because I want to set the author ID parameter to the given author ID that's typed in in the URL only if the author ID is actually present like that. And so now when I hit reload with this author selected, you can see it filters the articles down to only those that are authored by Clark Kent. Now we do have one problem with this though, and you may have noticed this, and that is if you remove this uh, filter here, you can see that we have three matching articles by this author, it says. But if we click on it, you can see we only have two articles. So what's the case here? Why is it showing three articles? Now the reason is that there is one unpublished article by this author. And you can see here that I have this filter which fetches only the published articles. However, it turns out that filters are completely ignored by facet counts. So to get this to work, I need to convert the filters into queries. Now the reason I went with filters in the first place is because they are generally better performance. But with this side effect, we'll need to go with queries. We could do so with this bit of code. So here basically what I did is I took those two filters and merged them into the first query using a Boolean query. So all these queries must match and here it does the uh, query the user types in, then it makes sure that the articles are published and then it fetches the articles which have that author ID if that is present. 
So now when I visit the page, you can see that the article count is now correctly down to two because it's taking that query into consideration. And clicking on it works as well. It does limit down the authors down to only the one that's selected, but that's just how the uh, query facets work. I want to finish up by showing you a couple methods which are great for debugging search queries. One is to JSON, which if you call this at the search block level, it will uh, give you a string representation of the search that will be sent to uh, Elasticsearch. Another is to curl, which will give you that JSON string, but also inside of a curl command, which you can run directly in the command line. So for example, we can raise this and you can see what it looks like. Now when I reload this page here, you can see we get this curl command that was raised so we can try running this in the console. And so when I paste this in, we get back the JSON response data that would be sent back to Tire from Elasticsearch. So this is really useful in debugging situations when trying to figure out why a given search query isn't working the way you expect. Well, that's it for this episode on using Elasticsearch with Tire. Hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.